Hey guys, Bridget here. And in this video, I want to share with you an introduction to Framer, which is going to be over an hour long. And this is just a small snippet of my upcoming Framer course. So if you want to learn and master this software, feel free to check it out when it's going to be available. And now without further ado, let's jump right into Framer. So let's get started. And the very first thing that you want to do is to go on Framer.com and you want to click start for free today in order to sign up and create your account which is a process which is going to take just a few short minutes and once you enter your account which you can easily do either via the web platform or the standalone software you're going to be redirected to this main screen which i want to take a moment so that you get familiar with all of the major options so as you can see, you're going to be able to view all of the recent projects uh, right away in this whole uh, field. And uh, you can even sort uh, by last view by yourself, uh, last edited or in alphabetical order, which is going to be useful for filtering uh, projects. Now on top of that, uh, on the left side, you're going to see some uh, quick uh, links uh, which are going to be useful. So you can have an app tour by clicking on this one. You can uh, visualize uh, the templates uh, and the Framer has uh, tons of uh, templates uh, which uh, you can leverage. These are either free or premium templates, so definitely have a look. And uh, on top of that, uh, you're going to find uh, some other options uh, like the Figma paste, which is uh, going to be a plugin uh, in essence, which we're going to discuss uh, in uh, much more detail in uh, the future videos. And you also have uh, the tutorial section. Now on the very left, you're also going to see the project section, which is going to be where you're going to find all of the recent projects. You can also see archived projects uh, and that you can create a new workspace, which is going to enable you to group projects all within a dedicated space, which you can then share with other team members or clients. And over here, you're going to find all of the basic settings for your personal and workspace account. So anything that is related to that, you're going to find here together with all of the projects and the archive. Now, I want to take a moment uh, to mention this uh, link, uh, which is uh, the community, because if uh, you go on uh, the community, I highly recommend you to check it out uh, and uh, also to join it because you're going to find uh, a lot of uh, useful resources, uh, posts uh, and updates uh, from uh, Framer themselves. Uh, so it's uh, a really useful place to get uh, familiar with uh, and also to receive uh, help whenever you get stuck on a project. Also, on top of that, uh, you might want to consider using the night mode if you're into dark UI and uh, that uh, pretty much wraps up uh, all the major features of uh, the main home screen. And at this point, uh, what we want to do is to click on create a new project in order to get started with your very first Framer project. We're inside our very first Framer project and we're going to have an overview of the various sections in the screen. On the very left side, by default, you should have this insert panel, which is activated. And over here, you're going to be able to insert all of the elements, which we're going to discuss in a greater detail throughout the course. So this is going to be one of the main uh, sections which you're going to have access at all times. Now, if you click uh, on the insert again, you're going to see one of the most uh, crucial uh, columns of uh, the Framer platform, which is uh, pages, layers, and assets. And this is where your project uh, is uh, going to be and uh, have uh, all of the different pages of your website in this case. Uh, here you're going to find all of the layers. So as we start adding items, you're going to see this section being populated and you can easily switch the pages directly from here. And over here, you're going to find more advanced assets such as components, styles, and even coded assets, which we're going to discuss in future videos. Now on the top, uh, you're also going to find uh, useful features such as uh, layout options, which are going to be really 
important for creating responsive website components. You're also going to have the text, the CMS and the actions, which these last two we're going to discuss in great detail throughout the course. Now on the top, you can see that this first project is untitled by default, but if you click on it, you can actually rename the project to whatever you prefer. And if you see at the very bottom, you have a few different items. The very one which is default is the cursor. And this is going to enable you to drag elements around and select items and things of that nature. If you move on to the next one, you can see that now as I hold with the left mouse button and I move around, you can actually pan around the document. Now you can easily do that just by pressing spacebar as you have the default move tool activated. So this is going to be much more efficient than selecting the pan tool each and every time. On the right of the pan tool, you're going to find the comment section, which is going to enable you to write comments to other team members or write personal notes going to explore some of these uh, collaboration tools in more detail and uh, a fun addition is the theme which is going to enable you to change uh, the theme to light or dark UI in just one click. After that uh, you have uh, some basic zoom in uh, and zoom out options uh, which uh, you can easily prompt uh, simply by using the command key and uh, scroll wheel up and scroll wheel down or even plus and minus button plus the command key. So again, command key minus, it's gonna zoom out, command key plus, it's going to zoom in. And uh, if uh, we select uh, with the move tool, any element, uh, in this case, I'm going to select uh, the frame, you're going to see at the very right that uh, this column is dedicated to the options which are going to help you edit uh, the properties and values of a specific object. We're going to explore all of these items in future videos in more detail. And on the top right, most of these options are going to be related to collaboration, publishing, and sharing projects with your team members. Now that you have an overview, we're going to explore all of these tools in much more details in the upcoming videos. Now that we have a basic understanding of the UI, we're going to create a page and preview it. So we're going to click on insert and as you can see under the basics panel, you're going to see the pages section. And over here you can find all sorts of different page templates which you can use to kickstart a page in a fast and efficient way. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to select the very first one, click on add page. And as you can see, the page has been added to the main homepage. Now, the reason being is that we haven't specified any design for the homepage. So it automatically created it inside the same page. But if you actually go back on the pages panel, we select, for example, this second one, which is portfolio, you can see that uh, a new page beneath the home page has now been created. Now, one important note is that if uh, during a project you wanted to change the home page to any of the other pages that you're going to see in this left column, you can simply right click on it and then click on set home page. At this point, this portfolio page is now going to be the home page of the website. So at this point, what we can see if we zoom out is that by default, this page has different breakpoints. Now breakpoints are an essential element which we're going to discuss in much more detail in the future videos. But just to give you a brief overview, it's going to dictate how the website is going to display on a desktop format, on a tablet format, and on a mobile phone format. 
you can also see the exact uh, measurements that they're referring to. So for example, this top 1200 is referred to the width uh, in pixels. So it's uh, 1200 pixels. Then the tablet uh, is going to activate uh, on sizes beneath uh, 1199 and the phone is going to activate for with sizes beneath 809. So you can have a granular level of detail when it comes to these measurements. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the old home and we're actually going to set it as a home page again. And we're going to preview it, which you can easily do by clicking on this preview button which you can also find here on the top right. So let's click on it. And as you can see, you're going to be able to see the preview of this page. And uh, by default, uh, we also have some uh, animations to these uh, pages, which uh, Framer offer us. On the top left, uh, you're going to see a few options which uh, are useful. First one is going to be the reload. So if you want to reload the page, uh, you can simply click on this button. And you can also prompt a full screen mode, which uh, can allow you to see the website in its uh, full screen. In order to go back, uh, simply click on show UI and uh, that is going to get you back to this view. You can also set uh, the width directly from here. So if, for example, I want to test the website at uh, 1000 pixels of width, I'm simply going to enter 1000, press enter. As you can see, the width uh, is going to apply. The same is true for the height. So if I have a specific scenario where I want to test it uh, at uh, 500 of height, I can easily do that. I can also move uh, these values uh, in a interactive way directly from here. As you can see, they're going to update uh, automatically. And uh, we're going to discuss uh, some of these other options uh, in uh, future videos, uh, but these are going to enable you to invite and publish uh, the website. In this brief video, I want to talk about uh, sections, navigations, uh, and the menu items. Now, as you can see, once you click on uh, the insert button, you're going to see under the basics panel, sections, navigation, and uh, menus. Now, the reason why these uh, are going to be useful is uh, starting from the sections, these are going to give you pre-styled elements that you can easily add within a template. So as you recall from the previous videos, we actually added this landing page, which you can see right here. But say that I want to add a new section, which is going to be somewhat similar to this one right here. I can actually drag and paste this in one single click. Now the beauty about sections is that they're already predefined and pre-styled so that as I look at the tablet and the mobile version, these are already optimized. So you're going to save time in the styling. And there are sections of all sorts. So I invite you after this video to have a look and start adding and experimenting with these sections, which in some instances are going to be really useful, especially for more complex designs, uh, such as a uh, pricing section and so on. Now let's talk about uh, the navigation because uh, navigations uh, deserve an area for themselves uh, because uh, navigation items are usually going to be quite uh, tricky in the sense that they are going to have uh, several items and uh, interactions potentially. So let's go ahead and let's add a navigation item uh, right here at the very top. You're going to notice that this navigation item is in a different color than the other section items. And the purple basically symbolizes, if we go back to the layers panel, that we are dealing with a component. Now, components are going to be an element which we're going to discuss in a much greater detail in the future videos. But if we double click on the actual component on the left, you're going to see that we're going to have the individual elements of this component. These are going to be the drop downs, which are going to appear once we select one of these menu items. 
And on the very right, you're going to see also the mobile version, uh, also with uh, the open menu. So if we go back uh, to the home section, you can see how this is starting to play into more intriguing dynamics, uh, which uh, we're going to explore soon. And uh, over here at the very bottom, you can also find uh, the dark versions of uh, the header. Now, the last uh, element uh, which uh, you want to keep in mind is the menu items, because of course, these are going to be the actual items uh, where you're going to have all of the different uh, menus. And now that we have a basic overview of uh, all of these core elements, uh, let's uh, continue making some progress with uh, the next video. Adding and editing images in Framer is uh, quite easy. There's uh, a few ways you can add images. The first one is going under layout uh, and clicking on image. And then you can uh, use the left mouse button, drag uh, and create uh, your image uh, field. The other option is using the keyboard shortcut Shift plus I and you're going to prompt the exact same image option. Now there is one last way that I want to show you. To add an image you can simply drag and drop an element or an image directly onto the frame or canvas and as you can see it's going to be added in a second. Now, if we go under the fill, you can see that uh, we have uh, this uh, layer set as an image. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to explore the different options which you have uh, at uh, your disposal right here. First of all, you can replace the image by simply clicking on choose image. Then you can uh, use uh, any other image to replace it. Now, there's also some other options. Uh, first one being the resolution. The auto is uh, the one which is going to be default uh, and uh, you're probably going to use it uh, the majority of the time. There is also the option to have uh, auto lossless uh, and uh, you could even uh, make uh, the resolution uh, smaller so that uh, it's going to be minimized uh, in terms of uh, file size uh, on the web. And uh, you can make it minute, large or full. Now, most of the times I simply clip it on auto since uh, it's going to be the best uh, bridge between uh, small resolution uh, and quality of the image. Now let's explore the other options uh, which uh, we have at our disposal. Now I'm going to add the image uh, in uh, this uh, other way which I showed you at the very beginning of uh, this tutorial and uh, I'm going to focus on uh, the type. Now, as you can see, fill is uh, going to fill up uh, the element uh, which uh, we deemed as the layer of uh, the image. And uh, if uh, we transition to fit, you can see how now the entire image is going to fit uh, regardless of uh, the ratio or the size that uh, we are attributing to that specific uh, element. Now, if we check, uh, there's going to be two other options. And uh, by the way, you can also uh, set the position to either center or left. So if uh, we go ahead and uh, we make this uh, a little bit bigger, you're going to see exactly what I'm referring to. If I center it, it's going to be here. It's going to be right. Uh, that's uh, where it's going to go. So you can play around uh, with uh, these settings depending on uh, what you need uh, at uh, that specific time. Now, we're going to also see the stretch, which as you can see, it's essentially going to stretch the image and uh, try to accommodate uh, to fill up uh, the entire element uh, of uh, the layer. And uh, the very last one is going to be the tile, which uh, as the name suggests, uh, is essentially going to scale up or down the image um, based on this scale value to create uh, a tile effect which uh, you can uh, also use some of the presets uh, that you see here in case you need some uh, of uh, these uh, uh, specific uh, tiles which of course is going to um, remove the image which you selected as these tiles uh, 
presets are actually considered as uh, images. So we're simply going to leave it at fill. And uh, one last uh, element, uh, which is uh, quite important uh, in uh, this option, is the alt text. Now, what the alt text does uh, is uh, it's going to give uh, the search engines uh, a clue as to what the image is about. So, for example, the alt text uh, for this image uh, could be a uh, man wearing a bracelet. And uh, <clears throat> this is going to be uh, very useful not only for Google or other search engines, uh, but um, also for accessibility, since uh, individuals uh, uh, with uh, visual impairments uh, are probably uh, going to utilize uh, some uh, uh, softwares that is going to enable them to uh, hear what uh, the uh, image visuals are about. So this is going to be really useful for them. And uh, we always want to be mindful of uh, accessibility on the web. So it's uh, just a really nice thing to consider for them as well. Now we also have two more options. The first one being uh, the crop. And uh, as the name suggests, uh, this is going to enable you to crop uh, a specific uh, part uh, of an image. You can also set uh, the uh, height in uh, width and uh, the height over here and you can uh, crop it uh, and as you're going to see it's going to crop uh, the image in that, in that specific uh, location. One more thing uh, is uh, you can uh, utilize the Unsplash library directly from Framer by clicking on uh, Unsplash and uh, you can uh, search uh, through the entire Unsplash library which by the way <clears throat> is a huge uh, library of uh, royalty-free photos uh, I know that some photos you're going to need to check the, the copyright and the terms and conditions, but overall uh, an amazing resource uh, from unsplash.com, which uh, I utilize uh, quite often. So I highly recommend you to check out uh, as um, it's really a solid uh, library. So this is it when it comes to images uh, and uh, we're going to continue with the next. In this video, we're going to learn uh, how to add uh, colors and uh, gradients uh, in a framer. So what we're gonna do is we're going to actually add a frame right over here. And uh, you can see that on the right panel, we're going to find the fill option under the styles. So we're gonna click on it and uh, modifying the color is actually very easy. You can uh, simply select the color from the hue panel and uh, this option right here enables you to reduce uh, the transparency. Now you can also decide uh, if uh, you want uh, to have uh, a hex uh, RGB or HSL uh, color system. Usually you would work on uh, hex uh, the vast majority of the time, especially if you're working on a website, but those options are available. Now on top of that, uh, you can uh, Use the color picker by clicking on uh, sample color and this is going to enable you to sample pretty much uh, any color within the file directly from uh, that uh, uh, menu item. You can also use uh, Ctrl uh, plus C in order to change uh, the, um, the option to the color picker and I believe uh, it's uh, the same also on uh, Windows. And in order to change uh, the fill uh, to a sample singular color to a gradient, you can uh, simply select over here the gradient. Uh, and uh, as you can see, as uh, we select uh, first uh, the top one, and then we're going to select the other one, we can uh, easily change uh, the gradient color, which uh, in this case, uh, it's uh, a linear gradient. Now I can also uh, change the orientation by hovering over either the top uh, or just beneath uh, the bottom of uh, the gradient's uh, control points uh, and selecting uh, and holding with the left uh, mouse button and moving around uh, is going to enable us uh, to change the orientation uh, of uh, the gradient. 
If uh, I also use the shift key at the same time, I can work uh, in uh, angles of uh, 45 degree. You can also change uh, the gradient uh, to be a radial gradient, which uh, you can easily adjust uh, in uh, height uh, uh, directly from uh, this section. And uh, you can uh, also change uh, the uh, width uh, of the gradient uh, from uh, the right uh, control color uh, option. So very easy to adjust uh, and you can also move around uh, this uh, radial gradient by selecting uh, the center point uh, and uh, moving it uh, around. Now one type of gradient which uh, you're going to probably use uh, very occasionally is the conic gradient but this is going to be quite useful in uh, some scenarios. So again, very similar to the uh, radial gradient, you can easily select the center point and uh, move it around. And uh, you can also uh, simply add uh, more touch points directly from here. And uh, you can change uh, the gradient uh, uh, directly from uh, this uh, section. So very easy, very intuitive to use. Uh, and uh, by the way, you can uh, adjust uh, the gradient points uh, also in uh, these uh, other sections uh, or other type of gradients, uh, since uh, this is going to enable you to create uh, all sorts uh, of uh, different uh, variations uh, very easily and in a fast and efficient way. In this quick video, we're going to learn how to apply a shadow in Framer. Now, if uh, we select uh, an element uh, such as this one, but you can also simply create uh, a frame, uh, you're going to notice that we have uh, this uh, shadow option right here, which by default uh, is going to display like this. And uh, as I click on it, uh, you're going to see this uh, shadow menu. Now, the very first option we're going to discuss in just a minute, what I wanted to focus on initially is the x-axis, which is going to determine the position of the shadow within its x-axis. And as you can see, you can actually add both a positive value or a negative value. And the same is going to be true also for the y-axis. Now, the moment that we're happy with the position, Usually you would uh, either increase uh, or decrease uh, the blur depending on uh, the type of uh, shadow that you're creating. And uh, the spread is essentially going uh, to determine the size of the shadow. So that's going to be the main element that you're going to usually tweak uh, when it comes to the shadows. And uh, you can also change uh, the color and uh, apply a transparency to the shadow so that it's not uh, as harsh as uh, having a full color set at 100%. And uh, one really useful option which uh, Framer introduced uh, is the realistic shadow. Now the realistic shadow is uh, essentially going to give us uh, a more realistic uh, feeling to the shadow. So if we zoom in, uh, you can see how the shadow is uh, getting uh, darker as we are going uh, more towards the actual object and then it uh, smooths out uh, in a, a very soft uh, way. So this is going to be uh, an effect that you definitely want to keep in mind. And uh, the very last option is going to be the positioning. So by default, uh, it's going to be outside, but uh, you can also set it uh, inside uh, if uh, that is the effect that uh, you are looking for. You can also add and combine multiple shadows. Uh, so for example, I could have uh, one inner shadow and uh, then I can add uh, an outside shadow in order to create uh, specific effects uh, and you can create uh, as many shadow effects uh, as you want. So the sky is the limit when it comes to the possibilities of uh, creating effects uh, using uh, this uh, very option. In this video, we're going to learn how to use links in Framer. Now there's two types of links primarily. The first one is a link that uh, links from one page to another. And the second one is going to be a scroll link in the sense that it's going to connect to a specific section of a current page. So over here we have two pages, home and portfolio. I'm going to create a link 
that uh, is going to connect this text and uh, this page. So simply select the text layer, click on link, and then over here you can see that we have under the pages portfolio. You're also going to see CMS uh, items pages over here. And uh, if uh, you have a long list, uh, you can easily just type uh, portfolio and you're going to see just that option. Now at this point, uh, we have to decide if we want to create a new tab uh, once you click on this link, which is going to open two tabs, the one with uh, this current page and the new tab which uh, we created with uh, the portfolio. In this case, we're going to say no. And if uh, we test this out, uh, you can see that now this is a link. Uh, and if I click on it, uh, it's going to redirect to the portfolio. You can easily just uh, create the same link uh, to go over here on the home. And uh, this is going to help us navigate throughout the website. You can also use components uh, with uh, links uh, within uh, one another. So you don't have to create uh, this uh, process manually each and every time. So for example, the top navigation is always good to have as a component since uh, you're going to have it throughout the website and uh, you simply have to set up these links once and you're good to go for every single page of the website. Same is going to be true also for the, free, for the footer and uh, any other component. Now let's explore the second option which uh, we have at our disposal, which is linking uh, a section of the page. So for example, let's say that I wanted to create a connection to the frequently asked questions section. I can simply select uh, this item and uh, what I'll need to do is uh, I'll need to create uh, a scroll section, which is going to create uh, uh, an ID target uh, essentially so let's click on plus and over here already written FAQ. So I'll simply confirm that. And uh, you can notice that if you go under the layers panel, you're going uh, to basically uh, see that there's some connection points uh, which uh, suggest that there's links. Uh, but for the time being, uh, you just need to make sure that uh, the scroll section has uh, uh, an attribute and uh, I'm going to write here FAQ and uh, I'm going to create a link uh, which is going to be to the home still because we're operating on this page and uh, now we have this section panel which uh, under it uh, you can see the newly created FAQ again you can decide if open it in a new tab and uh, you can decide also if uh, the scrolling, so basically once I click on it, how the scroll interaction is going to be. And uh, I'm going to select smooth so that uh, it's not going to be instantly redirecting down. And if uh, we select uh, the preview and I click on FAQ, you can see how now we created an internal link uh, in uh, this uh, framer side page. In this video, we're going to learn about typography and textiles uh, in Framer. So let's uh, get started with the basics. I have uh, a default uh, website uh, here. And uh, if uh, I click on uh, any text layer, which by the way, I can also add uh, by simply selecting the text tool and uh, typing in, uh, I can easily see that uh, on uh, the right panel, we have this uh, text section. And uh, essentially, we're going to have uh, a few different items. The first one is going to be the content, which uh, the content I can actually change by double clicking uh, over the text uh, and uh, I can write whatever I want, or I can uh, change it uh, from this uh, content section, which uh, is going to be useful in uh, certain uh, occasions, which uh, you're going to learn about uh, uh, along the way. And um, essentially, I can uh, simply rewrite and uh, click press enter. And as you can see, the content is now updated. 
Now, we're going to discuss the textiles in just a moment. I just want to briefly go over the basic uh, options, such as the font, which allows you, as you can imagine, to change the font. You can also add uh, custom fonts. So basically, you can, uh, as uh, you can see here, upload fonts from your computer to add them to your project. Uh, you can also upload it to use uh, on uh, workspace uh, projects in uh, workspace settings. So there's uh, uh, the, this option as well. You can search for fonts uh, directly from here. So if I want enter, I'm going to basically type in enter and uh, here I have uh, the font. Perfect. Now the other option is going to be the weight. So very similarly to most other softwares out there, you can change the weight. Uh, depending on uh, also of course on uh, the font that you're using you can change the color and uh, the color is uh, going to be uh, an option which is common in uh, pretty much uh, all of the other uh, areas such as you know elements uh, so we're already going through the color section uh, in depth uh, uh, as well as, as gradients uh, in uh, another video you can change you can change the size uh, and um, over here, one thing to notice is that uh, you can uh, both select a pixel value or also the fit option, which essentially is uh, going to make the text fit uh, according to the length uh, or width of the parent container. So as you can see, it's uh, going to fit accordingly in uh, all of the responsive sizes and uh, this is an option which uh, you don't have in Figma for obvious reasons uh, because um, it's going to be uh, much more convenient to <laughs> keep these options in uh, a site builder such as a uh, framer but definitely something that you want to consider and you can also set it to a sp specific uh, percentage size so for example, I can set it to 50% and now this text is spanning 50% of the width of the container. So this is something that you also want to keep in mind. You can change the letter spacing. So as you can see, I can make it quite wider. And uh, you can also set it in EMS, which is uh, a unit uh, which is often used uh, in uh, web design. And as you can see, by default, also the line is uh, set in M and uh, you can also change it to pixels or percentages. So these options are really going to depend based on the project uh, that you're working on. There isn't like a, um, a best practice when it comes to you know fit or pixels. Uh, um, just be mindful, of course, of creating a solution which is going to work uh, in a responsive and uh, ideally fluid way between uh, the different sizes and uh, you should be good to go. Then we have the alignment, which allows you to set the alignment uh, to uh, one of these uh, values. I'm going to simply revert back to, to pixels and uh, so that we can actually see in these uh, options uh, play so I'm going to change the alignment and this is going to essentially work uh, in uh, that sense so the paragraph is going to be an option which you're going to notice if you have uh, two or more paragraphs so for example over here uh, for some reason it's not catching the the paragraph even though it feels uh, like <laughs> I definitely created one so I'm going to use a line break and uh, yeah that's exactly what uh, is going to, to trigger it. So as you can see, I can uh, adjust the size of uh, um, the basically the distance between one paragraph and the other. So very easy, very simple to uh, adjust all of these settings. Now let's go back to the styles panel, which I mentioned not too long ago. And uh, essentially the styles panel is going to give you a option which uh, very closely resembles uh, design systems principles in the Figma. So the text uh, uh, layers which are most commonly used uh, throughout a website uh, such as the heading, uh, think about heading one, two, three, four, and uh, all the way to six, uh, or the body text. Uh, those are going to be common uh, 
textiles which you're going to utilize more and more often and you want them to be consistent between one page and the other and uh, hence why we are almost creating components uh, out of uh, the text but uh, they're not components because obviously it wouldn't work so we have textiles instead so we're going to basically set uh, and as you can see we already have presets of exactly what i mentioned the different heading sizes and uh, uh, also the paragraph so this one is um, definitely going to be a heading one so we're going to set it as a heading one and uh, you can edit uh, all of these options which i just mentioned plus more in uh, this dialog box so very briefly we have the font we have the weight uh, the styles uh, uh, color uh, transform which essentially tells you if you want to you know capitalize make it uppercase make it always lowercase and uh, you can also choose text decorations such as uh, uh, the uh, line through or the underline uh, you can choose the alignment uh, as well as some more you know minute uh, options over here uh, you could even add a breakpoint uh, so if you want these to um, happen in, in a certain way at certain breakpoint uh, you can uh, easily change this so in larger medium uh, and small these uh, settings are going to be different and um, essentially you know you, you can change it uh, in a way which uh, you know this is the medium since it's the tablet uh, and uh, in the small version uh, it's going to be like this uh, so you can also do that uh, if, uh, if you want and um, yeah this is going to give you minute uh, granular, granular options over all of the different uh, styles so i could uh, even add this uh, as uh, a paragraph uh, and uh, over here i'm going to have uh, all of the same options and uh, i can easily adjust it uh, throughout uh, the project so very easy to use uh, overall uh, uh, very intuitive you can always uh, adjust uh, these uh, options uh, on the go so very uh, simple and um, this is pretty much it when it comes to the typography and uh, the textiles uh, in a framer in previous videos we briefly touched on pages layers uh, and assets but in this video i want to give you some uh, more real life example using this uh, framer sas website kit uh, which uh, you can uh, download for free on uh, framer templates website now as you can see over here under the pages uh, we're going to have access to all of the main pages uh, of uh, this website uh, and uh, if we click uh, on the three dots menu you can see that we have uh, a few different options the first one is going to be the settings which uh, we have an entire section dedicated to all of the settings on uh, the framer site and uh, over here you can also decide to rename duplicate copy or delete uh, that page now you can also access the canvas which uh, is essentially an area which uh, is uh, outside of uh, the flow of uh, the other pages now if we go under the layers you're already probably familiar with uh, all of the different options and uh, we are examining in depth uh, all of the items uh, within uh, the framer interface so we're not going to focus too much on uh, the layers just one note, uh, try to keep uh, your layering system organized uh, within Framer. This uh, is especially going to be useful if uh, you work uh, with uh, other designers uh, as uh, it's going to uh, help them understand uh, which uh, section uh, is uh, organized and uh, how they can uh, pick up from uh, where you left uh, and uh, work uh, on uh, the projects together in a, a very easy and uh, efficient way what i want to focus on uh, right now is uh, the assets now as you can see the assets panel is uh, composed of uh, a few different items uh, namely components which are going to be reusable components uh, within uh, 
the site, such as buttons, uh, footer sections, logos, uh, and uh, much, much more. And uh, you can see that uh, you can create uh, uh, nestings of components. So for example, here we have uh, projects and we have uh, all of the components related to project. And then we have uh, components related to framer and uh, framer modules. So there is uh, this uh, ability that uh, you have. And uh, if you click uh, over here, you're going to be able to either edit the component, find it within uh, the uh, workspace uh, and uh, rename, duplicate or delete. You can also add it to a library. You can uh, copy the import or, or copy the URL of that component so that you can easily share it and uh, allow in individuals to find it very easily. Over here, you can also find uh, the styles which uh, has been applied. And uh, these are the styles that uh, are the default uh, in uh, the project. Now, one thing that uh, I want you to notice uh, is uh, how you can uh, create uh, styles uh, which uh, are duplicates of uh, the same uh, uh, style, but with, uh, with uh, variations. For example, here we have two H4s. We don't necessarily need to have simply just one. In this case, we have uh, a variation which uh, is going to be the heading long. And uh, although it's similar to the H4, you are creating essentially a, another subversion of uh, the main heading for. So this is something that you can do all for pretty much all of the items. For example, so here we have a different type of paragraph. So you don't simply need to have uh, just one uh, uh, body. You can have uh, small, medium, large, and uh, this gives uh, extra fle flexibility whenever you're creating a site. You can have uh, also styles for links and uh, also the different uh, colors. So this is uh, almost like a, a small design system if you're used uh, to Figma or similar design uh, uh, tools uh, and uh, it's uh, tightly created in a way that uh, it helps uh, build uh, for the web. And at the very end uh, you can find uh, the code section which uh, is going to enable you to create uh, a code file. You can add a name and then you can create either a new component or a new override and then uh, you can uh, create it. So this is it uh, as an overview. I know that some of these concepts uh, might be uh, difficult to grasp at this uh, very moment, uh, but uh, we don't worry about it because we are going to go into depth into all of these items so that you're going to consolidate the knowledge and everything that they mentioned is uh, really going to click. So I just want to give you a bird's eye perspective, high level overview of these items and especially when it comes to the assets uh, we're going to explore and master them in uh, future videos. Okay so now we're going to talk about icons and uh, how to add them in Framer. So there's uh, a few different ways that uh, you can add uh, icons in Framer. The very first one uh, is going to be simply going under the insert panel and uh, you can see that under the elements we have this icon section which uh, allow us uh, to leverage some of the most uh, popular icon libraries out there. So for example, if say that I'm using hero icons on a project, I can simply click on hero and uh, what you're going to notice is that we're not going to see any um, library and uh, with all the different icons that uh, Hero gives us at uh, our disposal, but we're simply going to have uh, one single icon which has been added in the file. Now, in order to change uh, the icon, uh, you have to go under the Hero component section and uh, you can uh, effectively look at uh, the list from here, which can be a bit uh, cumbersome. So what uh, I recommend you to do is uh, if uh, you're not sure which icon from the hero icon uh, library you want to use, uh, simply go 
on uh, the official website uh, and uh, keep it uh, at hand uh, in order to look at the uh, icon so for example say that I want to uh, add an adjustment uh, horizontal I can uh, essentially find it over here and then uh, I can either copy the SVG so I could go here and simply copy it but uh, even better than that uh, is uh, to use uh, the component uh, which uh, uh, I can uh, have right here and then uh, I can simply look for the adjustments uh, vertical icon right uh, here so it's a uh, very simple um, it really depends on your workflow some people some designers like to uh, copy the SVG, maybe you're working on a Figma file with all of the icons and you can literally just copy and paste it uh, uh, directly from uh, from Figma to Framer or as you just seen from uh, pretty much any resource uh, uh, that allows you to copy the SVG and um, on top of that uh, there's uh, a few different uh, icon sets uh, which uh, are going to be quite uh, handy so Feather is definitely one which I used uh, quite often uh, and uh, Google Material Design icon set uh, is uh, one which uh, is uh, extremely popular in the design community so I highly recommend you to check out uh, this uh, icon sets and uh, just play around with them and uh, you're also going to notice uh, right here that we have this uh, list and uh, uh, search uh, option so you could search, uh, for example, over here, I can look for arrow and um, bam, I can simply click on enter and uh, the icon, uh, uh, which is relevant, is going to appear. You can also select if it's mirrored or not. Uh, you can change the color. So pretty standard, pretty easy overall uh, to change these icons. And you can also change the style. So see so that you're looking for other styles in this specific instance, there isn't uh, any, but if the icon uh, library um, has uh, different styles uh, connected to it, uh, you can easily just change it from there. And uh, to put out some uh, fun uh, icons, uh, sets, uh, or humans, for example, which allow you to, as the name suggests, uh, to create uh, different uh, uh, scenarios with different humans uh, so very uh, very interesting uh, of an icon set uh, and again you can uh, go on the human website in order to see all of the options at your disposal and maybe you want to recreate uh, a specific uh, uh, human uh, you can easily do that with uh, a more visual approach instead of uh, going through drop down menus uh, all the time so this is it when it comes to icon sets. I would like also to recommend you two um, icon uh, softwares which I use all the time. The first one is Noun Project, which uh, is uh, one of the most extensive uh, icon uh, libraries uh, on uh, the web. I use it uh, very extensively, especially for times where I cannot find a specific icon uh, uh, in uh, most uh, icon sets or I need something which is more illustrative so for example if I look at the decorations uh, I can uh, easily see here that there is uh, a lot of uh, icons uh, which are uh, very nuanced they almost feel like uh, illustrations even more than icons so this is uh, definitely an icon set which is uh, really useful in uh, certain specific uh, cases so I can literally drag and drop it and as you can see we have this SVG of uh, this icon uh, which is uh, a bit uh, unusual compared to maybe some of the most uh, um, UI oriented icon sets and uh, another one which I use uh, quite often is uh, Nucleo now Nucleo is uh, awesome because uh, it's um, um, a software which allows you to add uh, different uh, icon libraries. Uh, so you have the Nucleo uh, free sample or there is also the premium one. Uh, and uh, you can have, for example, the Google material icons directly from here. So wh what I like about Nucleo is that it gives me a very visual approach. Uh, so if I, if I look for Arrow, uh, I can browse through all of these uh, 
in a very uh, easy way. You can also increase the size. Uh, and then once uh, um, uh, I found a specific icon, I can simply drag and drop it into the file. And um, yeah, the workflow is uh, extremely easy. And um, these are pretty much like my, my go-to when it comes to my icon set uh, approaches and workflow. And um, hope this video was helpful. We'll continue learning more about Framer in the next one. In this video, we're going to learn about quick actions in Framer. In order to prompt the quick actions, there's uh, two ways to go about it. The first one is simply clicking on actions. And as you're going to see, this menu is going to appear. The other option is going to use uh, command plus uh, K and uh, as you can see we have the exact same menu. Now at this point uh, quick actions uh, are going to give us uh, a few different uh, options. The first one being the create uh, a web page. So you can easily create uh, a new page directly from the quick actions. You can also create a component directly from the quick actions. So be going to write here example as you can see we're going to be redirected to the component section now quick actions are super useful to also browse through pages quickly so if i simply prompt the quick actions and i type home and then i press enter i can go home i can then change it to pricing go back home you see the gist of it so this uh, is just uh, a few things that quick actions can do you can also generate uh, a ai page which uh, i have an entire video discussing this very option you can also publish uh, the website uh, open localization features uh, cd version history and invite collaborators and uh, as you can see on the very right there's uh, keyboard shortcuts uh, that uh, are going to help you speed up uh, the process you can also browse the library and uh, many more things. So this is uh, it when it comes to the quick actions at a glance. And uh, it's uh, going to be an important element to practice in order to speed up your workflow in the Framer. In this quick video, I'm going to show how you can publish a website. So we have here this beautiful template by Higher Vision and uh, say that we wanted to publish uh, a site. Simply click uh, on the top right uh, publish button. And uh, at this point, uh, what is going to happen is uh, you are going to have this uh, temporary domain or actually not even temporary. This is actually a domain which is a subdomain of uh, Framer. So if you want to create uh, a custom subdomain, you can easily simply go here and uh, go under the custom domain, select uh, the subdomain which you want, my site uh, 33, and uh, click on the checkbox. And at this point, uh, you're going to have uh, this uh, subdomain, which uh, you can easily try and uh, see directly from here. Now. The question is uh, if uh, you want uh, to add a custom domain. So you can simply remove uh, this domain, remove it. And uh, I'm going to click here on connect a domain that I own. At this point, you can see that uh, you'll need to upgrade uh, the site. Uh, and uh, essentially in order to connect the domain, uh, it's uh, quite easy. We're going to go in another video to explain uh, what are some of the best places to get uh, domains uh, at uh, good prices? But essentially, you simply have to follow the quick steps uh, that you're going to see in uh, this uh, screen whenever you click on connect a domain you own, and uh, you're going to be able to connect it. Now, I'm not going to show you this because uh, there's going to be some differences uh, between uh, some of the domain registrars. Uh, so you're going to have to follow the instructions uh, both uh, on Framer's part and on your specific registrar which you selected. But overall, it's a very simple, straightforward process. In this quick video, we're going to learn how to export an asset in a Framer. So simply select uh, any asset. In this case, uh, it's going to be this button. And uh, at the very right uh, on uh, the bottom of the right column, you're going to see this export feature. Simply click on a plus 
and as you scroll down you're going to see that this uh, option uh, is going to open up now the very first thing that you're going to have to decide is to either export this as a PNG or as a JPEG Generally speaking, if uh, you're working with an image, uh, you want to export this uh, as a JPEG, but if uh, that image is uh, specifically having a transparency applied to it, uh, so think about uh, maybe a person with uh, a transparent uh, background uh, or maybe even uh, a logo, you might want to opt for the PNG as it's going to accept uh, that transparency. Now you're going to have to be mindful if you're then going to export and uh, add these uh, images to a website because uh, the, the sizes uh, are going to depend based on the image so you might want to compress them afterwards. That being said, uh, once you selected either PNG or JPEG, you can uh, decide uh, the ratio which uh, you want to export it. 1x means uh, exactly the same uh, size uh, as uh, you have it over here. So for example, the width uh, it's uh, going to be 108 pixels and uh, the height is going to be 36 pixels. So at 1x uh, that is exactly going to be the export size. If uh, you wanted to say do it at 2x, uh, it's going to double the size. Uh, so the sizes that we just mentioned times two and then you can do the same also times three times four 0.5 is simply going to be half of these sizes so you can easily export these into one or even multiple sizes so you can have a 1x and 2x and as you can see the second value for the 2x is going to be the suffix and this means that whenever we export this in these two file formats, this file is going to have a suffix in order to make it easier to view on the folder. And if I click on export, I can go ahead and say create a folder, add a button. And if I go in my folders, I'm going to essentially see that uh, we have uh, this uh, button exported and uh, the suffix uh, at 2x can be seen uh, right here. So now you know how to export uh, any item uh, and asset in Framer.